All right, everyone. Let's get started. So like we said, I am Julia Becker Collins. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am the Chief Operating Officer of Vision Advertising. And I feel like I'm leading a college class so that you know you're in the right place. We're talking about why you need a marketing plan and a marketing strategy. Um, so we're gonna go through a number of pieces today. I am going to screen share with you so that you can follow along with all of my slides. If you have any questions whatsoever after this, and I don't answer your questions, or you just want to reach out, all of my contact information is also going to be in the slides. So feel free to jot that down. You can contact me on social media, email, messenger pigeon, whatever you like. Um, but we are going to get started with that. Um, like we said before we started recording, if you have any questions whatsoever, please, please, please put them in the chat and we will do Q&A at the end. I also tend to run these webinars in a fashion where I will ask you questions and ask you to put comments into the chat so I'm engaged where you are with your business and your understanding of things. So that helps me to customize what I'm talking about with your needs, okay? So it makes it more interactive, which is usually incredibly helpful when we do these virtually. Awesome. So let's get started. I'm gonna share my screen with you. So give me just one second. Awesome. So you should be seeing the PowerPoint presentation at this point. So I'm gonna get it started into a real slideshow and not, there we go. Excellent. So I like to call this invest in success rather than chasing trends because what happens when you don't have a marketing strategy, and we're gonna dive into this a little bit, is that you tend to sh chase the new shiny object. And you don't wanna chase the new shiny object. You want to um, really make sure you are, you know, doing what's best for your business based on your goals, your budget, and your ideal client of who you want to be selling and marketing to. And that is really why a strategy and a plan is key to your success. It allows you to stay focused on what is best for your business rather than all the distractions out there, okay? So that's really the high level of what we're talking about today. So giant photo of me. Mm -hmm. This is who I am. So I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Vision Advertising. Like I said, here is all of my contact information. Please reach out to me if you need to. I was uh, Worcester Business Journal 40 Under 40 Award winner in 2019. I have been with Vision Advertising for more than four years. I was brought on as Vice President of Marketing and Operations and promoted to Chief Operating Officer about two and a half years ago. Um, I am the lead uh, executive of the company. I, uh, all the buck stops with me, the staff all reports to me. I have all executive decision making. We have an amazing CEO who is uh, semi-retired and I have great discussions with about uh, consulting and high level decision making, but um, I have been running the show for more than two years and it's really incredible. Um, I always make sure to give out both my personal social media handles and our corporate social media handles because one of the things we often talk about in this webinar and others that I present is the difference between the public information you present in your personal social media and your corporate social media. And this stands for whether you are a solo practitioner you make sweaters and you hand knit them and you put them up on Etsy versus you run a 300 person business, right? There's a lot of questions about that. And so I always like to give out our information as an example. So I encourage you to follow us. It also is a great way to learn about the other webinars and resources we have available. So a little bit about vision advertising. We were founded in 1999. 
uh, actually founded in the dorm room <laughs> of our CEO at Becker College in Worcester. Um, and we have been working with clients uh, nationally and really specifically in the New England area ever since. We are based in Westboro. Right now, we are based in my home office in Marlboro, but we also have an office out in Portland, Oregon. We are a full service marketing agency and we are 100% woman to own and run. We are also certified by the state as a woman business enterprise. A long process, but a process completely worth it to get certified. Um, we uh, were named a top 10 communications and ad firm by the Worcester Business Journal 2018, 2019, and 2020. And fingers crossed we will be named the same this year as well. Um, we've received more than 22 industry awards and you can see some of our achievements for clients over the past few years as well. Um, and if you really do have any questions about us as a company, I do encourage you to visit our website, vision-advertising.com. But I want to dive into the meat of what we're talking about today. So let's talk about marketing strategy. So um, give me one second. I am, this is brand new platform for me. So I am trying to understand how to see the comment box when I share my screen. Give me just one second. Huh. Okay. It looks like I cannot see the comment box when I am sharing my screen unless I am not seeing something here. So I am just going to power through and we will do Q&A at the end. Um, so when we talk about marketing strategy, it really is the intersection of your marketing and your overall business strategy. Sometimes when people think about marketing, they think about you know specifically Facebook, Instagram, Maybe they think about print ads, et cetera, but they don't think about putting a conscious strategy behind it. And I don't know if it's because marketing seems so ethereal to them or it seems too overwhelming, but marketing is an asset for your business. And just like your budget or your P&L, uh, profit and loss, or just like how you create your product or service, you should have a strategy for your marketing just like you have a strategy for the other aspects of your company. Now, if you don't have a strategy for the other aspects of your company, that is a different webinar. Um, so usually um, I would have a conversation with you about, you know, where is your understanding of your marketing strategy? So think in your head right now, if you are on a scale of one to 10, so one being no strategy whatsoever for marketing for your business, 10 being I have a complete, you know, 10 point plan for 2020's marketing strategy for your business. There is no wrong answer. So think in your head of where are you on that one to 10 scale? And it, you could be a one, you could be a three, you could be a 10. There again, no wrong answer. And it could be that you know you should be at an eight or a nine, but you just haven't had the time you haven't put in the work, or you don't understand what you should be doing. You obviously know that you need to have a marketing strategy, otherwise you wouldn't be here today. So that is a wonderful first step. So I'm gonna talk about marketing trends so that we can talk about building your strategy. And it's really purposeful that I start with this because the distraction the thing that keeps you from staying focused with your strategy once you have really spent the time building it is the marketing trend. They are the marketing trends. The thing that could prevent you from even crafting the strategy could be the marketing trends. And what do I mean by trends, right? I always think about it as the squirrel, right? So we have a puppy and we have two cats. So what is the most exciting thing to a puppy and two cats? A squirrel. Right, so maybe you saw that kids movie a couple years ago where there's the cartoon dog and he just looks and he goes squirrel. And I think it was the may maybe the movie Up. And that's what I think of when I think of marketing trends. It's the new exciting thing that's moving fast across your screen and everyone's talking about it. So right now, and maybe you have heard of this, 
right now the new shiny object is clubhouse the new shiny object a year ago was TikTok. the new shiny object right before that snapchat the new shiny object before that whatsapp right is this all sounding familiar and maybe you're sitting in front of your screen going yes julia i have heard of all of these i didn't know what to do and so I joined, I'm on all of them. I'm not on all of them. I froze. Those are all valid answers. They are the new exciting thing, which is great, which means they could be a new valuable resource. But you can only know if it's good for you and your business and your resources. And we're going to talk about resources shortly. You can only know if it's good for you, your business, your resources, your goals, if it's within your strategy. If you go chasing the trend, if you go chasing after Clubhouse, if you go chasing after uh, Snapchat or WhatsApp or TikTok without thought of, is this good for my business because, then you are chasing a trend. You are doing what we call spaghetti marketing which is throwing things at the wall to see if they stick, which is not a great use of your time. You will find things that work, but overall, most of the spaghetti is not gonna stick, okay? So how can you tell what's gonna work and what's not? So here are some examples of marketing trends. What I often hear from people when we have discussions about social media or we have discussions about marketing strategy in general is I keep being told that I need to be on Instagram. Okay. Why? I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm asking why. You will hear me if you work with me, if you hear me speak at workshops and webinars. One of the big things I always say is why? Because you need to be able to say to yourself, not to me, it's your business. You need to be able to say to yourself, I should spend time and or money on this because it supports my business in the following ways. Now, if you can answer that question in that way, then have at it, go for it. And if you can't, then either you need to figure out how to answer that question or that does not serve you. Just because other people are doing it does not mean that it serves your business, right? How about TikTok? I had a conversation recently with a woman who owns a jewelry business. She's had the storefront for, I think, 15 years. She's very successful. She's trying to build up her business in two very specific verticals. What's a vertical? A vertical is very, a simple way of explaining it is a vertical is a very specific group of people you're trying to sell to, a very specific thing you're trying to sell. She's trying to build up two verticals in her business. And her question at a social media webinar I was putting on, she does all her own marketing. She chooses to do that. That's the investment of time she has chosen. Her question was, should she be on TikTok? And my response to her was, are the people that you are trying to sell to in these two verticals, are they making buying decisions on TikTok? So one of the verticals was she's trying to sell to white men in their mid twenties to mid forties who are buying custom engagement rings. So are they making buying decisions on TikTok? And then we walked through the logic of that. No, they're not. And the end result is no, they're not. So that is not a good use of her time. Now she just decided to do it because she thought it was fun. That's fantastic. But if you have limited time and limited resources and you know, you're running a business and you're doing 17 million things like I am, like probably many of you are, that is not a great time of your time, not a great use of your time and resources. Okay. This is one of my favorites because I hear this all the time. How many of you get unsolicited advice from family on how to market your business? I have heard that. I have been doing this for more than 15 years. And I'll sit around the Passover dinner table and from my aunt's boyfriend, who does not own a business, does not run a business, but heard from his golf buddy that you should be marketing on that new hot thing. And I really deeply appreciate his interest, but that does not mean I should go chase that trend, 
right? And then who among you has spent actual dollars, money on marketing because you heard it work for somebody else? Maybe you're in a Facebook group. Maybe you are in a mom's group. Maybe you're in a BNI. Maybe you're uh, friends with somebody. Maybe one of your entrepreneur friends. Maybe somebody that you know from college, et cetera, told you that uh, be doing ads on LinkedIn worked really, really well for them. And so you chose to do so and it didn't bring in any money. Or maybe you heard that uh, Instagram story ads worked really well for somebody and you did it and it didn't work. And maybe it could work for you, but you're having trouble with the execution, right? So that's what we're talking about when we talk about marketing trends. So spaghetti marketing is what I mentioned earlier. Are you trying to see, quote, what sticks? So it's a really good phrase. It's a good visual to put in your head when you think about, is this something I should be doing or am I throwing things at the wall to see what sticks? So the way that my brain works, and obviously everybody is different, I like visuals, I like analogies, it helps me to remember things. And I have found that with my clients and the people I speak to, it helps with them too. Because marketing can feel so overwhelming, right? It can feel like there's so many things to remember and it's these algorithms and it's so confusing, right? And maybe you're sitting there going, yes, Julia, I feel the exact same. I don't understand what Mark Zuckerberg is doing over there with that algorithm. And it just, I feel like I'm fighting and shouting into the wind. Yes, I get that. So spaghetti marketing is not only a great term to know, it's a great visual for you to think about when you're trying to make decisions. So that's why I always bring it up, okay? So let's move on. So, one of the hardest things about strategy, marketing strategy, is not only creating it, but sticking to it. So I like to talk about it as your BFF. Strategy in general is your BFF. Cozy up next to it, have a glass of red wine or a cup of coffee, a spiked hot chocolate, whatever you love, sit by the fire and make friends. Because you might fight with your strategy and you might disagree sometimes, you might have to have a long talk with your strategy, but at the end of the day, your strategy should have your back and you should be able to sit down and figure out if a change to what you're doing, if an investment in your time, your money, your resources is the best thing for your business to bring in new sales or a new campaign or whatever decision you're making, if that is the best thing for you because it's aligned with your strategy. It should, your strategy should support you rather than fight you. You can alter your strategy, but it should always be in the best interest of your company and your goals, right? So let's talk about how to find your strategy. And I really specifically chose this visual for this slide because you really should be thinking about strategy as a way to hit the nail on the head or get that arrow in the middle of the, you know, thing, et cetera. It is a way for you to meet your goals, okay? It might be tedious, and it might be difficult to construct it, but sitting through a webinar like this, investing in your company and your goals, crafting the strategy, and it doesn't have to be a 15-page thought document. It could be a one-page bullet-pointed document. But crafting the strategy is a way to keep yourself, your business, and all of your assets focused. Okay, so let's start with goals. So I talk about goals all the time, but what do I mean by goals? Only you can define your business goals. And they can be both long-term goals, short-term goals, micro goals, the goal for the business, etc. So let me use an example. I worked with a university in uh, Worcester about two years ago. They were trying to increase the enrollment for a very specific department of undergrads. 
And while they were doing really well at bringing in the undergrads once they applied, they were struggling in getting more to apply. And once we dove really far into it, one of the struggles they were having was actually keeping the marketing for admissions, the admissions marketing staff motivated through the very long and arduous cycle every, you know, every fall and spring and annual cycle of admissions, of marketing out to whether they are transfer students or freshmen, et cetera. And so what we did was we sat back and we said, okay, so in, I think it was 2019, what is your goal for applicants? And you need to use hard numbers here. So I'm just going to throw numbers out there. Um, and these aren't real. We want a thousand new applicants for the fall 2019 uh, semester. And we want them to come from Florida. I'm just throwing things out there. But again, specificity will help you because if you don't define your goal, you can't define success. So that's an annual goal. Great, so that's your goal for the year. Fantastic, that's one bullet point. Annual goal, boom, hard numbers. Fantastic, let's break that down because they struggled keeping people motivated because the annual goal felt, not that it was too big, but it's just gonna take forever to get there. So how do you, you as maybe a small business owner, a mid-sized business owner, a leader, how do you stay motivated to get to that big goal that feels so far away, I can put it off, I don't have to deal with it today. That's a win, but how does that really affect that? Fantastic, let's break it down further. Then you do quarters. So maybe you've heard people say Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Maybe you already know what those are, but I don't like to assume that people know every term out there. So when people say Q1, Q2, et cetera, what they mean is quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. All you're doing is breaking the year down into quarters, right? So January, February, March is Q1, et cetera. It's a way of looking at your budget, your goals, et cetera, in smaller doses of time. So you can then create Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 goals. Again, hard numbers. So if we're using that university example, what is the goal for Q1 2019? Is it applicants? Is it phone calls with interested parties? What is the goal? Okay, so the 2019 Q1 goal is 50 phone calls with interested applicants from Canada, right? Just again, throwing things out there. And 150 new phone calls with potential applicants from Arizona. Hard numbers, specificity. Be specific. It could be how much money you want to make. It could be new sales, it could be conversations, it could be you producing a certain amount of things, but again, now you're down to a quarter. Okay, the three months feels like a long time. It could help you reach that goal, but is every day going to feel like a slog if you're trying to meet a three-month goal? Okay, let's go back even further. What is your one-month goal? My one-month goal is 25 phone calls with potential new applicants from Arizona period. Again, specificity. Fantastic. Now you know what your one month goal is. How do you get there? Because if you build on the one month, you get to the three month and then you get to the annual. And whether you're leading a team of 300 or it's just you, the specificity not only helps you reach the bigger goals, it helps you stay motivated. And when you're thinking about marketing, that strategy in terms of the business goals and your marketing goals will help you stay focused on where you put your resources, which is the next thing we're gonna talk about. So what do I mean by resources? It sounds like a really specific term, but actually it's not. So when you think of resources, what you're probably thinking about is money, right? Cold, hard cash, whether it's in the bank or in your pocket. But what I mean by resources, and if you've heard me speak before, I say this all the time, what I mean is time, money, or expertise, or a combination of the three. So what do I mean by that? Money is money you can spend. Your budgeted money, your budgeted um, resources, excuse me, 
budgeted uh, funds for your marketing, your budgeted lines for the different areas of your business, right? Funds. Time. Time is the most valuable resource you have. And I say this over and over again. So I am like a record, broken record about this. You can make your money back. You could go into bankruptcy and then you could still make it back. You could lose your house and buy a new one. You could be a multimillionaire. You could be in poverty and make more money. There's a million different ways to make more money, but you can never get your time back. There is no way to get your time back. So in actuality, time is the most valuable resource you have. And we usually don't think about it because what we usually think about is, well, I can't spend money on that, so I'm gonna spend my time on that, which is a valid decision, except what usually happens with that decision is you don't realize the resource you are using. When you make a decision to use time rather than money, you need to realize the use of the resource because when you spend time on whether it's your marketing, it's you're trying to uh, see if a new trend will work for your marketing, you're going to have a meeting with somebody, you're taking a phone call, you're not sure if it's going to work out for your business, uh, answer the phone when you're already busy, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you are allocating time to something when you could be allocating it to something else. You're making a decision about where your resources go, just like spending money, okay? And the third resource, like I mentioned, is expertise. So expertise is, well, do you have somebody on your staff that is already amazing at uh, Facebook for business or photography or video editing, or they're just really a whiz at uh, Photoshop? right? Is there something that you, an untapped resource that you could be using to help with your marketing, with your business, with your sales? Those are the three key resources you have. Those resources play into your goals that we discussed earlier. And then the third item that you need in order to find your strategy is your timeline. So like we talked about earlier, goals, using hard numbers, and I use the example of the university, the one year, the four quarters, the one month. Again, you can break this down how you want, but I specifically did it on a timeline because we tend to think in time. It doesn't have to, the goals don't have to be time delineated, but your goals should have a timeline. I'm going to give myself three months to meet this goal. I'm going to give myself one year to meet this goal. You need to define your goals because if you do not define your goals and you do not give yourself a deadline, then you cannot determine if you have made yourself successful, if you have hit success. When you, when your team, when the people who work for you, when your friends, anybody that is contributing to your success, whether it's your spouse, your intern, the you know, 10 people who work for you, people want to celebrate success. And that is a wonderful way for you and your team to stay motivated and stay invested in your marketing strategy. One of the ways to do that is to create these timelines and have hard numbers because then you can say, hey, we met this goal within our timeline. That's amazing, let's celebrate. I think what happens a lot of the time, especially if you're a high achiever who's used to you know, ticking things off the list, kind of say, okay, that's cool, I did that, let's move on. That's definitely something I am guilty of, and I know a lot of other people are guilty of it. So there's a lot of really big benefits beyond just knowing that you'll be able to focus better on your marketing when you go through and create this strategy. So. Using the university example again, we had the goals, we know the resources we have, right? We have this admissions marketing department and we have, you know, 10 people that work there and they are going to outsource the marketing to a different department on campus because they can only do so much in-house and we've created the timeline and you can have more than one timeline like we discussed, we can have the month, 
You could have the quarters, you can have the year, you could have other parallel timelines and other goals going at the same time. So this is your starting place for your strategy because until you've created the structure to know what your goals are and what success looks like, you can't create the strategy because you don't know what you're driving towards, okay? So let's keep going. So we just talked about resources. Um, this URL at the bottom of the slide is a blog on our website that will help walk you through even further the best use of your resources. Because again, it's one of the most common questions I get asked. So again, money, time, people, expertise. So people being the people that work for you, the people that support you, et cetera. So let's talk about this timeline for your strategy. So like we said, you can have both a long-term and a short-term, and it doesn't have to be one year. Again, I'm just using that as an example. You could have, and I've had this conversation with clients, your strategy could have to do with a very long-term uh, goal. It could be the large goal for the company. It could be that you know the university wants to um, shift its focus and bring in um, more transfer students from overseas, and we're gonna shift entirely what we do long-term over the next 30 years. And then you can create, you know, 15 year goal, 10 year goal, one year goal, et cetera. So there can be multiple timelines working back from that, but you need to have the goals structured so that you can create the strategy. So the timeline helps to define the strategy in general. Again, definition around all the timelines. So what I mean by that is hard numbers help you define what success looks like. You know, how many sales are you trying to make? How many new conversations are you trying to have? If you have more than one strategy, so what I mean by that is um, the marketing strategy could be, okay, so I'm trying to have those 50 conversations with people from Arizona for the marketing uh, admissions department. So the strategy is, again, I'm pulling things out of thin air here and I'm just making it up. Um, we're going to really invest $10,000 on Facebook ads because the people we're trying to attract are the parents of these high school students. And really primarily it's the mothers and our research has shown they're on Facebook. So we're gonna go really hard for the next three months advertising on Facebook. And we're going to invest in a new landing page for our website that is really attractive for mothers of high school students. And we wanna create a new 800 number and we're going to also be on some podcasts to talk more about how amazing our program is and we're gonna do some free webinars so that people understand the expertise that our programs offer. Right, so all of this is strategy, marketing strategy, that is specifically aligned to your goals. So I'm hoping this makes sense. And if it doesn't, and if you have any questions around this, please, please, please put it in the chat. And we will do Q&A at the end. So the reason I'm really sticking to and going through timeline goals, et cetera, is because you have to start there in order to get to crafting your strategy. And you know, the thing that really helps you stay focused and not get distracted by the shiny objects is knowing, you know, I'll use vision advertising as an example. You know, I'm not gonna, I don't have time, not that I don't have the money, but I don't have the time right now to spend on Clubhouse trying to figure it out because unfortunately uh, I have somebody on maternity leave and I am stretched a little thin at the moment and I need to make sure I'm taking care of myself in addition to working. So I have decided that that's not a good use of my time. And that is a valid decision. In addition to that, it is not going to help me meet my goals of the type of clients I'm trying to bring in right now. It definitely could help bring in clients for a different type of marketing agency. So you have to make decisions about if it's a good use of your time. And we as an agency sat down and had a discussion about it. Is it something we want to invest time in? Is it something we want to investigate? Here's who we're seeing is on there. Here's how much time it would take. Here is who was on staff who could do that. 
okay, but that's not the type of person, you know, the type of person that's on there right now is not necessarily the type of person we want to be talking to to bring in as a client. And there you go. So that's how you make those decisions. If that was something that would work for us, then we would create a strategy around, okay, we're gonna spend some time on this. This is a goal, this is a great additional tool and all our tool belt to meet our goals. It helps you make the decisions about the trends. One of the things on here says one timeline can trigger another to start. And the reason it says that is I get a lot of questions about, okay, so if I want to do all of these different things, if I have a goal about this and I have a goal about this and I also want to do this other thing and I have created different timelines, right? So you have these four quarters and you have this one year plan and you have this one month plan and you have a 15 year plan, right? You've created this really intricate timeline and goals and then you you know backed into it with a strategy that's wonderful one of the things that can happen is you get very trigger happy and you want to start too soon with the next stage of something and what you often have to remember is that your marketing strategy your marketing in general your goals are can be not always but can be like dominoes falling one can trigger another to start. So in order, not always, but in order to really, you know, go full throttle and be able to go all in on that three month goal, you have to hit the one month goal. It's not necessarily the case for everybody, but that can be the case. Um, I did consulting work with a client who had very, very aggressive goals for the holiday season. They were selling a product. I worked with them intensely for about four to six weeks. And they said, you know, we sat down, we created really concrete sales goals for them from Black Friday to New Year's. And I said, how much money do you have to bring in? How much revenue do you have to bring in in order to keep your store open? And how much money do you want to bring in? What will make you comfortable, right? Let's do two tracks. And what is your goal for next year? But you cannot touch next year until you meet one of these two goals. And if you meet only the goal of, I made enough money to stay open, then we have to do an interim goal of some padded income before you can go full throttle on the, the big, big goals for next year. So that is what I mean when I talk about the domino effect with your strategy and your marketing. But when you think that through in terms of your goals and your objectives, that helps trigger your strategy and the actions you take, right? So she was going really hard for those six weeks. She figured out, we worked together, we figured out this is how much money she can invest in marketing. This is how much time she could invest in marketing, um, who she could hire to do the work, who she had on staff that could also do the work, where the photos would come from, et cetera, et cetera. It was a very intricate plan. What ended up happening was that she made enough to be comfortable, not just stay open, which then triggered the, okay, next year the goal is to do X, which will bring in Y amount of income to bring in more padding so we don't have to panic at the end of the year, which is exactly what happened. But she was then solely focused on turning the direction of her company in a different way. So A, she wouldn't have the revenue issues she had had the previous year, and she could do things she liked better. And because she was so focused on trying to do things she liked better with her business, and knew she was supported by the goals with hard numbers and a marketing strategy focused on that, she was more successful. She wasn't distracted by the trends, okay? So let's move on. So when I talk about planning, when I talk about your goals, it really is that measure twice, cut once, which is such an old expression. My, <laughs> my grandparents were seamstresses, so I think that may be where I get it from, but it's, it's still really valid. You want to make sure that your goals and your plan are really set up and aligned with what you want to be spending your time on and the best plan for your business 
And that's not to say spend three months on the plan. That's just to say that invest the time and your brain power in creating the best plan possible and the best strategy possible so that you can execute once and do it with power and do it with a conviction that you know you are doing it the best way, okay? So again, executing your strategy. So once you know your strategy, you can, like we've talked about, know where to invest those resources. Again, going back to what we talked about earlier, the resources are your time, your money, your people, and your expertise. So knowing where to put all of those chess pieces. You can stick to your timetables. And in addition to that, you can pivot and move through the year as you need to. I had a conversation yesterday, or I presented yesterday rather, about the tough decisions you're gonna need to make this year as a leader. And one of the big things that happened last year after the pandemic started and continuing into this year is we have all had to make really difficult decisions in terms of budget, staffing, resources, marketing, uh, whether we're staying in offices, uh, new HR policies, legal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? If you're like me, you've sat in so many webinars recently about you know changes in the law and HR and finance, et cetera, taxes, you know, your head swimming. All of that also informs your larger goals and your larger strategy for your company. So I said this yesterday and I wanna make sure I reiterate it again today is, don't just stick to your convictions for your annual plan strategy goal because you know you sat down and did that. If a crisis emerges, if you know, if you go backwards in time to the beginning of March 2020, I had a plan for vision advertising and then a week and a half in I realized I had to scrap that plan and completely pivot. Because if you spend too much time being solely focused on the goal and not reading the room and not reading the resources in a crisis situation, then you'll go down with the ship. And I don't wanna seem dramatic about it, but I feel like we've all lived through the past 10 months, almost 11 months at this point, so we all understand that, right? So one of the great things about creating multiple timetables is that you can pivot and move more easily, right? So. Oh, I think I found the Q&A section. There's some real irony there. Um, so uh, let's talk again, going back to timetables. Having some shorter deadlines and some longer deadlines helps you to pivot and move, not only in a crisis situation like the pandemic or something that goes longer like the pandemic, but also when there's new opportunities. Okay, so there is a new marketing trend. I'm gonna use Clubhouse again as an example. Um, is this something that could be valuable to you? Okay, so let's go back to the goals. Let's go back to your strategy. Is this new resource, new um, application, something that could be valuable to you? You look at your strategy, you look at your goals, you look at your resources, you say yes or no, and if you say yes, okay, what do you need to change about what you've already crafted for yourself so that you can incorporate that into your marketing plan? And one of the other things that can happen a lot of the time when you're a leader, when you are leading teams, when you're leading a business, what happens to the best of us is people can start double guessing yourself, second guessing yourself. I had a conversation this morning with this amazing woman that I have known for forever, who I think is one of the strongest executive leaders you know, of our time. And she is just struggling right now and double guessing herself. And it happens to the best of us, but in terms of your strategy and your goals, this helps you to kind of center yourself and say, okay, you know, I might be in a difficult headspace because I feel like a lot of us are right now with the pandemic. You know, you've 
you have exhaustion about the pandemic or you have pivot exhaustion as the same friend says all the time. Um, but how do you make really strong choices as a leader? And one of the best ways to make strong choices that are informed by fact and informed by real information is to back it up with this strategy that has hard numbers associated with your goals. And I think what happens a lot of the time when I have these conversations is that what I'm talking about is maybe not the sexiest side of marketing, but it is the backbone of success for your business. It will help drive you in the right direction. It'll help you stay the course and make the best decisions with your resources and with your business, okay? And I've included on here a URL to another blog post that helps to talk about marketing plans as well. And if you go to our website, vision-advertising.com, you can go to our blog and there is just a wealth of information there. There's also videos um, and you will find even more than what I am just talking about today. So, so I am going to wrap up shortly and then we're gonna do Q and A. Um, but I always like to end this webinar with this slide because I want you to feel empowered to take everything you learned today and really move forward with excitement and take some time and craft out time in your schedule, even if it's just an hour to sit down and be like, okay, here are my goals. Here are my resources. Here is the timeline or the multiple timelines. Here's the strategy. If you need support or you are confused on how to figure out where to reach the specific people you're trying to market to and sell to, you can find a one hour recorded webinar on the Vision Advertising website that talks all about how to make social media marketing work for you and your business. Um, and I really encourage you to watch that as well. And that talks about how to reach your ideal client where they make buying decisions. That's a whole other hour and a half conversation that we could have. So I am going to end the recording and then we can do some great, and then we can do some great Q and A. Okay. So Stop share and